I just got straight back in again and hooked another one. And this one's pulling, feeding through the part. It's definitely brought some bigger fish in. That's a nice fish. As uh, I knew sooner or later some bigger fish was going to turn up on that line. We're here today at the fabulous Westwood Lakes fishery. Typical commercial fishery and we've been bought a day ticket and we're here just for a pleasure session. It's not a match, we've not got keep nets in, pegs not been cordoned off especially for filming, just turned up, people all around the lake and we're going to hopefully have an enjoyable day. So target species today, definitely carp but hopefully we'll catch some barbel, some tench, maybe a bream and some eyed. So today's just about catching fish, showing you different tactics just to come to a typical commercial and catch and enjoy your session. So we'll get some bait in the water and hopefully catch some fish. My approach today is going to be based around two swims. One, I'm going to try and go all out for bigger fish, maybe barbel and big carp. And the other one is more of a catch anything approach with maggots. So what I'm going to do, I've got an aerator to my left that's been on all night. They keep it running just to keep the water oxygenated. And barbel love that oxygenated water. And it's always deeper as well around these aerators. So I'm going to target the barbel and the bigger carp down there. So I'm going to pot in um, like a big pot of mark pellets and a little bit of corn just to lay a bed of bait on the bottom and probably leave that for like 20 minutes, half an hour before I have a look on it. And then in front of me, the swim actually shallows up the further out I go. So I originally plumbed up at 30 metres and it's not very deep out there. So I brought it back to about nine metres and there I'm just going to feed maggots. I'm going to put a, um, a pot of maggots in at the start um, just so there's some bait on the bottom and then I'm going to lose feed over the top. That gives me two options then, I can catch shallow, so I'll probably hide and carp up in the water and then with a deeper rig I can actually fish on the bottom under that bait where I've cut some bait in and again I could get some bream or maybe a barbel on that swim as well. So it just covers all my options and gives me the chance to catch a lot of different species on two swims while still keeping it quite simple. Just dropped in and first put on that maggot line, it's gone. I'm not quite sure what we've hooked to be honest. I think it might be a little carp, but there we are, first fish of the day. Looks like a little common. Now, yeah, lovely start to the session. Just hooked in the top lip there on double red maggot. A little carp, probably two or three pound. So we've not got keep nets in today. We're just going to pop him back. It's another skimmer. It's been a little bit different to what I was expecting out there. I thought we'd be catching a few more bigger fish, got a couple of carp early, got a golden tench and then I've had loads of skimmers like that. It's been great like great fun, I'm enjoying it but I want to catch some bigger fish as well so I think what I'm going to do is go on this inside line down here where I've been feeding some pellets and a bit of corn, I've fed that like three times now so it's had quite a bit of bait going in. So hopefully we're going to catch some big, big carp and bream down there. And then what I'll do on my maggot line, I'll probably just start loose feeding and see if we can get some carp up in the water. But yeah, fishing on the bottom there, it's absolutely solid, them skimmers. Which is, which is great fun, but we want to be getting something that's going to pull some elastic out, don't we?
second drop in on that short pellet line and we've got a fish. Not sure what this is. It's not tearing off. Be nice if it's another golden tench. Oh, it's not a little common, really dark one as well. Yeah, just on a single grain of corn. Look at that. Oh, it's a nice fish. Really dark. Dark common. Yeah, just over there, micro, single grain of corn. A little fish. Better stamp than I was catching on the other line where I was catching them skimmers. Hopefully there were some, some bigger ones out there. And what I'm gonna do is pop a little pot on the end and then feed um, like a ball of micros over the top now after every fish. I think putting a big pot in while I'm fishing it is just gonna cause a lot of problems with, um, with foul up fish and stuff. So I'm just gonna drop in a little ball of uh, micros and then just fish over the top of it with a grain of corn. That feels a better one. So I just switched to double corn there. Just seems like it's picked out a bigger fish. It's not huge, but yeah, it's pulling a bit of elastic out. Might be a carp, this one. It's taking off a bit now. This shallow water, they tend to these carp seem to tear off on a couple of mad runs. And when you can get them closer in under your feet. It's another nice common. Yeah, that switch to double corn seems to have done the trick. It's a good fish this is. I was just doing an iron about whether I was doing right fishing down there on that edge. Or whether I was better off going back on the maggot. Because I've had a couple of carp on that line. But I think get this in the net and we'll definitely have a bit longer down there now. Oh, he's nearly in the net there. Some poor net in there. You really do fight. Proper scrapping some of these fish are. Even the small one that you had earlier was really pulling. Lovely fish there. I've well, had them a couple of carp, and now I'm back to catching these skimmers. I think, looking at it, it's a case of feed some bait. The carp will come in, fish a bit, fishing a bigger bait over the top, especially like the double corn. And then it's just a case of catching a few skimmers. When the carp are there, they'll push the skimmers out a bit and, uh, and then you can catch them bigger fish. I've been feeding the maggot line, just dropping a few maggots over there continuously. Um, and I'm really keen to have a go shallow now. So what I'm gonna do, grab my shallow rig and, and just have a go, see if I can catch some hide, maybe some carp, 
Um, might even catch them skimmers up in the water. I'm not sure how, how many of them we'll catch, but yeah, another go and hope to catch some more carp. Well, we're going to kick things off on this shallow line about two foot deep. It's got a double maggot on the hook and a little bulk just above the hook length. As I say, I've been feeding it regularly, so I'm expecting to go straight in there and catch. What we catch, I'm not quite sure of. So I'll just ping a few maggots out there. And we'll ship this out, flick it over the top. One fish just swirled there. Well, first drop, first drop on the shallow rig, and we're into a skimmer. I don't think we're going to be, uh, be able to avoid these today, to be honest. Oh, but they're, great. they're still great fun to catch. Trying to avoid them, but yeah, it's just nice to have a bit of elastic coming out. Lovely fish. It's good, it's good 10, 12 ounces, I think that is. Yeah, hopefully we'll catch a few more of them. And I'm sure while we're feeding that bait and putting the rig in regular, hopefully a calf or two will show up as well. These are a lot smaller stamp than I was hoping to catch on this shallow line. I thought they would be bigger. What can sometimes happen is you get different levels where the fish are at. So these small fish are sometimes sat underneath the bigger fish. So I'm going to shallow that up. So what will happen is the bigger fish, which are the bullies, will be up near the surface grabbing the bait as soon as it comes in and the smaller fish will sit underneath them and pick off any bait that gets past the bigger fish. So I'm just going to see now, if I just shallow that up to about 12 inches now just to see if we can catch a better stamp of fish. Lovely little golden rod there. Beautiful little fish that is. So I've shallowed up to 12 inches as I mentioned. And I'm still catching little fish. So what I'm gonna do is probably go the opposite way, just go a little bit deeper and just try a little bit further down in the water. See if there's any bigger fish. That's a bigger skimmer. So you see, just as I mentioned before, it's about finding the depth where the better stamp fish are. So I've just deepened up there. So I've gone from 12 inches to probably getting on for two foot again. And I've had a better stamp fish. That's probably the biggest skimmer of the day. And it's been caught shallow on maggots. That's, I mean, if I was catching one of them every chuck on maggots shallow, I'd be in for a really good day. It's great fun that is catching them sort of fish. So we'll have another put at that depth. See how it goes. Bigger roach. Look at that lovely big roach that is on the maggot shallow. Great fun catching them. Tiny little roach there. I had skimmers and some nice roach on that shallow line, but no carp, no eyed, no bigger fish at all. So I think what I'm going to do, there's still this fish there, that, like I can see the swim fizzing and, and I can see that there's a lot of activity there. So I'm going to put the deep rig back over that swim, because I think there might be some carp feeding underneath. And also what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a pot 
on the end of this, and then instead of loose feeding with a catapult and bait falling through the water all the time, I'm going to put my biggest pot on, I'm going to give it a full pot of maggots every time I put in, but then not feed it anything else, literally like put the bait in, bait's going to go to the bottom and just sit and wait. Um, that way I think I'll probably either catch the skimmers or hopefully an odd carp and stuff as well. Um, I just feel that although the shallow fishing is good, there's just too many small roach and stuff to to make it worthwhile doing and it's like at the end of the day this is a pleasure session and it's more fun to catch big fish than little fish so yeah we'll pop a little pot on here and, uh, and get some bait and hopefully catch some bigger fish. All right. With this, I'm going to leave the lid on with this one, just so when I ship it out, it just uh, takes the bait a little bit more, stops it rattling out. So just carefully ship that out. And what I'll do, so I'll just empty that, all in the same spot so it's nice and tight, and then drop my rig in over the top of it. With an indication straight away there. Might take 10 or 15 minutes of just repeating this process just to get them fish back down. So obviously I've been fishing shallow and you're trying to get them up in the water and now you're just trying to do the opposite and get them back down again. That bite came a lot quicker that time. Not sure what we've got here, might be another skimmer. Yeah, bigger one. So the stamp of them on the bottom is noticeably bigger than what was getting shallow. We've got a few skimmers on that, on that deck rig. It's definitely worked cutting out the loose feed with a catapult and then feeding through the pot definitely brought some bigger fish in. I think I've got a carp on here now. But it's just getting to that time of day now where I think that the carp and then bigger fish are starting to feed. So I think what we're gonna do, hopefully get this one in the net, and then I've still been just priming that line down that side there, and putting, oh, that's a big fish, that's a nice fish. Oh. Um, yeah, I've been priming that swim down there. Oh, that's the biggest fish of the day. Um, and yeah, we're gonna go down there now and hopefully catch a few carp on that swim. A lovely fish that is on the maggot. I, was, uh, I knew sooner or later some bigger fish was going to turn up on that line and we've had some bigger skimmers on the deck there and then this one, oh, we'll get it back and then we'll try and down the edge see if we catch some more carp. Well even though I've been fishing that maggot line I've still been dropping in a little bit of feed every 15-20 minutes on that this sort of inside line that's away from the bank a little bit in the deeper water so I'm hoping that we can go in there with a, with a grain of corn and catch one pretty quick. I'm still optimistic about catching a barbel or two down there. But yeah, I definitely think that it's getting to that time of the day now where we should catch a few carp. There we go, look, first drop down there. We're into a better fish already. That it's another big skimmer or could be a a little carp, I think it's pulling a little bit too hard to be a skimmer. Might be a little carp this one. Yeah, just keeping a bit of bait going in on that swim while I was fishing on the maggots definitely been the right thing to do. It's always important, just even on a pleasure fishing session, just to keep a couple of swims on the go. And then that way you've always got somewhere different to try and somewhere to try and catch a few fish. Looks like a little mirror this one. In the net we go. Lovely little fish that is. Hopefully there's a few more of them down that edge there. I'm gonna keep a few, a few pellets going in down there. Just little balls of micros going in through the toss pot. But yeah, a few more of them will be very welcome before we end the session. And maybe a bigger one as well.
There's another nice fish. You're playing these fish, when they tear off like that, all you've got to do is just keep the pole tip nice and low and they will eventually just come back towards you. And then it goes. Another nice fish. A big common. Again, that was on the double corn. Well, since we've gone down that edge, it has been completely different to earlier in the day when I went on it. Early in the day, it was mainly skimmers, not many big fish. And then this time around, it's been completely different. We've still caught a couple of skimmers, but we've had carp, we've had another golden tench, we've had two or three barbel as well. Not big barbel, not, not the massive ones I was hoping for, but a couple of pound each and they've been scrapping. And yeah, I had a couple more carp as well. And then I've got something on here that I think we're probably going to make this the last fish of the day. Been a brilliant session, really enjoyed it here at Westwood Lakes. Always do. You never know what you're going to catch. And yeah, it's just been a really nice pleasure fishing session, to be honest. It's not been, I'm not, I wouldn't say I've been bagging up, but I've caught fish all day. I've just had to swap and change about a little bit. So I've obviously been on that maggot line and I've done a few different things there, gone shallow, I've gone on the deck, and I've just kept putting a little bit of baiting down this edge and it's come good like this last hour. It's a later part of the day as well, you'd expect a few carp to feed, but it's just nice just to end the day with the bit of the elastic coming out and some fish pulling back a little bit. But yeah, I think, I'm not, I mean, we've not put a net in today. It's, like I say, it's a typical pleasure fishing session. We don't use nets here in, when you're pleasure fishing, so we haven't put one in today. But yeah, I think we've definitely caught over 50, 60 pound of fish today with all the skimmers, with the carp and that we've had, with that big carp that we had on the maggot as well. So it's been, yeah, a really enjoyable day. Another mirror, this looks like, so I think we'll get this one in the net. And then what we'll do, I think, is just have a quick little recap on what we've done today. And then it might be time to to get in the calf and get ourselves a bit of cake and a coffee. Oh, what a fish. Another lovely fish, probably six or seven pound that'll be. Really chunky mirror. Perfect little fish to end on. Well, it's been a fantastic day here at Westwood Lakes. Don't matter if you're a serious match angler, if you've only just started fishing, I don't think you can beat a pleasure fishing session just for enjoyment, just being outside and just catching some fish. And hopefully you've learned a little bit today about how to approach a session just to catch fish. So obviously maggot to catch skimmers and carp and barbel, anything that swims. And then been feeding that inside line as well just to catch some carp. And at the end there, it's really come good. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see all of our brilliant videos coming with myself and the rest of the Matrix consultants. See you on the bank soon.